Happy White History Month! This video will discuss whether opals are unlucky and where that myth came from. Opal derived its name from Apollos, which means to see a change in color. Onomacritus, an ancient Greek poet, wrote the delicate color and tenderness of the opal reminded him of a loving and beautiful child. However, it was the Romans who popularized them over 2,000 years ago. Opals from this era are thought to have come from Cernowitz, a mountainous region in what was at the time Hungary, but is now Slovakia. However, early Romans believed the source was India, and this was encouraged by Indian traders to drum up trade from Rome to India. But it was an incorrect belief. Pliny the Elder wrote the first natural history of the world in the first century AD. In this very important publication, he wrote that opal was the most highly prized and valuable of all gemstones in the empire. Pliny wrote that price was set according to the decree generally set down and pronounced by our nice and costly dames. Pliny's admiration for opal is encapsulated in the following text. For in them you shall see the living fire of ruby, the glorious purple of the amethyst, the sea green of the emerald, all glittering together in an incredible mixture of light. These stones are likely the black opals from Russia and Eastern Europe. Opal is October's birthstone for good reason. Mark Antony loved opal. Pliny wrote that Antony coveted an opal owned by Senator Nonius and banished the senator after he refused to sell the almond-sized stone, reputed to be worth 20,000 sesterdices, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars today. The senator chose to be turned out of his house and home, then part with his opal. According to Kosminski, the ring was discovered in the tomb of the firm-willed senator early in the 20th century. Opal has been used in the crowns of kings. The crown jewels of France included fine specimens of opal, and the crown of the Holy Roman Emperor contained an opal stone. Napoleon presented his Empress Josephine with the Burning of Troy, a magnificent opal with brilliant red flashes. Queen Victoria popularized opal as we know it today. She became a lover of opal and wore opals throughout her reign. Her friends and her five daughters were presented with fine opals, which were then copied by various jewelers around the British Empire. Opal became highly sought after because the royal court of Britain was regarded as the model for fashion around the world, and Queen Victoria was interested in supporting the trade of her colony, Australia, and fine quality opal had recently been discovered there. Australia's vibrant opal industry began with pioneering opal miners who worked and occasionally died in the remote Australian outback. Tully Cornthwaite Wollaston, born in South Australia in 1863, braved life-threatening conditions to acquire opal from early miners in remote, desolate areas. It was Tully Wollaston who introduced Australian opal to the rest of the world. He is considered the father of the opal industry. While working in Adelaide, Wollaston developed an interest in gemstones. In November 1888, he heard of a new opal find, and he and two companions, Herbert Butterfield and an Aboriginal boy named Tom Tit, left Adelaide on an over a thousand kilometer trek for southwestern Queensland. After completing part of their journey by rail, the men traveled by camel across the South Australian desert. They endured searing temperatures, suffered heat stroke, and drank from a fouled water hole, putrid with dead and dying animals. 
On the last day of their journey, the travelers were advised to follow a set of horse tracks in order to find Joe Bridle's Stony Creek Opal Mine. During the hottest summer on record, these men walked across rough country to spare their weak, sore-footed camels. When water supplies became low, Wollaston knew to follow birds to find a water hole. The horse tracks went around in circles and they became hopelessly lost. For 17 hours, they followed those tracks until finally reaching their mine. They had followed the trail of Joe's mate who had been drunk and wandered around for 24 hours. After buying opal from local prospectors, Wollaston headed back to Adelaide, leaving Butterfield to take care of their new mining ventures. The next day, Butterfield went out to round up the camels. After walking several kilometers in the heat, he collapsed and died. Was this the start of the opal curse? In 1889, Wollaston decided to set sail for England with a parcel of Queensland opal. London gem merchants were unaccustomed to the brilliant Queensland gems, a specific unique kind of opal called blue opal, and refused to purchase them. Wollaston persisted until the firm Hasluck Brothers of Hatton Garden agreed to trial the stones in Europe and America, mostly in five stone Victorian rings and brooches. Before long, Australian opal had been introduced to famous jewelry houses that began to feature opal in their designs. These included Tiffany, Lalique, and Cartier. Wollaston established many markets for Australian opal. He died in 1931, a wealthy man. Australia now produces around 95% of the world's opal supply. Australian opal, especially the blue opal, is prized the world over thanks to the pioneering efforts of Thule Wollaston, who did not give up. However, before the discovery and the persistence of the Australians, opal could be found in the mountains of Russia. Opal was associated with bad luck for some time and people believed it was due to Sir Walter Scott's best-selling novel, Anne of Geierstein, written in 1829. This novel tells the story of Lady Hermione, who is falsely accused of being a demon and dies shortly after a drop of holy water accidentally falls on her opal and destroys its color. The public took this to mean that the very popular author was warning them of the bad luck an opal can bring. Supposedly, within months of the novel being published, the opal market crashed and prices were down 20% or 50% depending on who you read. In 1877, an amazing black opal was found in South Wales, Australia, and the opal market was revived. This is before Wollaston bringing blue opals to the scene. The discovery of these opals in Australia led to the decline of European production, and some have proposed that it was the start of the Bolsheviks trying to choke off a natural Russian organic industry to pave the way for their revolution in 1917. Australia is still the principal source of black and white opals, but Ethiopia and Mexico produce opals as well. So what inspired Scott to write this novel? In May 1823, he had finished Quentin Durward and he expressed his intention to try in a continuation the deaths of Charles of Burgundy and Louis XI. Five years later, he began Anne of Geierstein, which ends with Charles's death at the Battle of Nancy and Louis in the background picking up the territorial spoils. He wrote this between September 1828 and April 1829. Scott used primary sources, and so that makes his books so remarkable. He used um, the modern studies of Switzerland, Provence, and the Secret Tribunal, as well as the recently published history of the Dukes of Burgundy by Barante. 
There is, in fact, little evidence that the superstition was common before the 1850s of opals being unlucky. They were given as anniversary gifts on the 14th year of marriage, for example. A popular gift book of the 1840s was entitled The Opal, which would seem an unlikely title if the notion of the opal's unluckiness was well established due to Scott's novel. In 1875, less than 50 years after the publication of Scott's novel, Sir Harry Ponsonby felt compelled to write to Notes and Queries to ask for the foundation of the superstition and received several different answers, none of which mentioned Anne of Geierstein. A brief assertion of such a connection is made by Sir John Piggott in an earlier issue, but it is hedged with a quotation from the gemologist Charles Barbot, who ascribed it to the influence of an opera, Robert Le Diable, or Robert the Demon, and the scholars responding to Queen Victoria's secretary do not refer to it. As discussed prior, it was in Queen Victoria's own interest to support Australian economy and add the opal to her beloved jewelry connection. The ancient Greeks believed that opals brought foresight and prophecy. While Arab cultures thought opals fell from the heavens in flashes of lightning, which is what imbued them with their changing colors. The first sort of indication that the opal was cursed and not merely just bad luck is the story of a cursed opal that King Alfonso XII of Spain received in a ring from a vengeful comtesse he had previously courted. After giving the opal ring to his wife, she died unexpectedly. The ring was passed down through generations and each new owner also died mysteriously. The depressed king decided to wear it himself, and he also died shortly afterwards. But at the same time, there was a cholera epidemic in Spain, and that probably killed the people of the story. Opals range from cool to warm in color. There are the more common flecked blue-green variations and Mexican fire opals that range from deep yellow to orange to pale red. The vivid rainbow effect of Australian boulder opals have become uh, one of the most widely sought after today, while the most luxurious are the fine, mysterious black opals with pops of blue, pink, and violet. While Queen Victoria did have opals in her collection, her Indian circlet crown was replaced with rubies, and it was believed that rupees had a better, um, had a better, they were a better symbol than the, than the opals. But we do know that there are opals in the British royal family's jewelry collection. However, they don't come out uh, to play, so to speak, that often.